from the sandy beaches of the Cayman Islands. Welcome to the GCN Show. From a very wet morning commute, Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada, welcome to the GCN Show. From Port Macquarie, Australia, welcome to the GCN Show! Welcome to the GCN Show. This week we are taking a look back at the inaugural Hammer Series race. We're also taking a look at some white kit, although you'll be pleased to know that doesn't include the shorts. Uh, we've got all our usual segments too, including some more fantastic hacks and bodges. We've got a slew of new World Tour bikes spotted at the Criterium de Dauphiné, and Peter Sagan gets shown up. Yeah. Huh? GCN had the enormous privilege over the weekend of live streaming the first ever Hammer Series race from Limburg. Uh, it's an innovative new three-day race series coming from Velon, which aims to bring new excitement and a breath of fresh air into professional cycling, which, let's face it, has remained pretty much the same now for over a century. And whether that's a good thing and whether professional cycling really needs that is very much over to you, but there's little doubt that the Hammer Series did provide a thrilling three days of racing. If you didn't watch it live, you can watch it on our YouTube channel right now. We've got all three stages up there. But the concept is as follows. There are 16 teams of seven riders, of which five must start each of the three stages. Each stage takes place on a small lap. Day one is the climb and day two is the sprint. And the teams are awarded points if their riders finish at the, in the top 10 at the end of each of the laps in those two races. That's right, and then it's the aggregate position of those teams which determines their starting position on the final day of racing, which is the chase, essentially a team time trial in a pursuit format. Now, being a new format, it does take you a little while to get your head around it, not least me, it seems. I apologise profusely once again for mixing up the rules on day two of our coverage. Nevertheless, now that the dust has settled, what do we think about the format as a whole? Well, to be honest, I found it to be three days of absolutely fascinating racing, especially the final day, the chase. I thought that was one of the best days of racing I've seen all year, to be honest, just because it was such a new format, so I had to work out what was going on, first of all. But a team time trial where the teams are all bunched up like they were, it's just fascinating to watch. It's carnage out on the road, but I think it's great for spectators, and hopefully the teams enjoyed riding it too. Yeah, technically drafting wasn't allowed, was it? But it did make for some interesting viewing, that's for sure. Uh, like you, I really enjoyed it, although I do think there are a few small things which could perhaps be tweaked uh, moving forward. Uh, nevertheless, now that the race has been completed and the rides and the teams have got a sense about the way that things can play out over the course of three days, I think we could see some incredibly interesting tactics used as well as team selections before the race which could really make a difference to it. Yeah, and I think that the format of the final stage, the chase, you know, we were discussing earlier, could work really well as a final individual or team time trial in other events too. Yeah. Imagine like a team or an individual pursuit hill climb for the top 10. Yeah, so the Giro d'Italia, for example, last 10 set off in order of GC and the first person to cross the line would have won the Giro d'Italia. That would have been quite exciting, wouldn't it? I think it's easy to understand as well. Yeah. Uh, do I think that this could replace the one day classics and the grand tours that have been around for over 100 years? Uh, no, I don't. I really like some of cycling's key traditions, but I definitely think there is a place in the cycling calendar for this format of racing. Yeah, I'm not sure it needs to replace it, but what we really want to hear is your thoughts. So tell us what you thought of the event of the weekend and tell us your thoughts on the Hammer Series concept as well down in the comments. It's caption competition now, your opportunity to win a GCN Camelback water bottle. Uh, last week's photo was this one of Tom de Moulin in the pink jersey at the Giro d'Italia. Lasty is going to let you know if you won. Well, if your name is Nick Manfield and you commented with this, you are a winner. Nick wrote, Tom de Moulin, clearly not using clinchers. Yeah, I particularly like that one. Uh, well done, Nick. Get in touch with us via a Facebook message with your address and we'll get one of these out to you as soon as possible. Uh, this week's photo comes from the end of the Hammer series. It's Team Sky celebrating and Lasty is going to kick you all off. Not kick you all off, but get you all started. You know yeah, what I mean. Lots of pressure there. My caption for this photo, Dan, is all eyes on the sky. Ah, very good. See what you did there? 
If you can do better, and I have absolutely zero doubt that you will, leave your captions in the comment section down below and the best one this time next week will receive a Camelback water bottle. It's now time for Cycling Shorts. We shall start Cycling Shorts, not with Cycling Shorts, but with a cycling jersey because Team Sky will for the first time ever race the Tour de France in a white jersey rather than their usual black. They made the announcement via social media and the model was none other than reigning Tour de France champion Chris Froome. Now, I quite like this jersey design. I think it is very cool, it's something different. But I do wonder how visible the best young rider who also mm -hmm. wears white at the Tour is going to be. Yeah, that is very true. Uh, sticking with the Tour de France, it has been announced that the 2019 edition of the race uh, will start in Brussels uh, to send a tribute really to the great Eddie Merckx. Uh, at come 2019, it will have been exactly 50 years since he took the first of his five victories at the Tour de France. So as I said, a fitting tribute really from the race director Christian Proudhon. Yeah, fitting indeed. I'm sure there'll be some brilliant stages on the way from Belgium to France as yeah. well. Moving from Eddie Merckx to cycling safety, which is of course at the forefront of all of our minds after a pretty grim few months for cycling, really. A group in Spain have been doing ghost bikes, but not quite as you know them. They've been using them to highlight some of the dodgiest bike lanes out there, many of which I think might have featured in our top 10 worst bike lanes video. Check out these images, I think this is something very cool and hopefully, like putting plants in potholes, it will draw the local council's attention to them. Yeah, let's see if it works. Uh, one city which is apparently already doing an enormous amount to help us as cyclists is Santiago over in Chile. Now this was brought to our attention on a BBC article on their website last week. Apparently, the city there closes 40 kilometres of its roads every Sunday morning so that cyclists can roam about uh, without motor vehicles getting in the way, which is a fantastic Fantastic idea. Uh, not sure if you can envisage that though happening in London or New York, for example, in the coming years. Uh, it is a fantastic idea, and hopefully one day for both those two cities, but I can't, not in the next couple of years. Well, fingers crossed, let's hope it happens maybe once a month or a couple of times a year in the not too distant future. Uh, one place though where you don't see many lorries or vans or cars is the sea, which perhaps means that Canyon Sram's Tiffany Cromwell has found the safest place to train. Uh, here's a picture of her competing in a leg of the Riviera Water Bike Challenge, uh, which is a water bike race taking place down in Nice. And I have to say, that looks like immense fun, and I can, I can see a GCN Challenge coming up soon. Yeah, I'd, never, I'd never heard of water bikes in the first place, no, to be honest. No, I hadn't. Peter Sagan has been at it away from cycling again. He's been showing off his wheelie skills in an advert for Telecom Slovakia. But this time, Dan, I think he was rather shown up by four yes. incredibly, incredibly talented ladies from the Act for Cycling cycling group. They are a cycling gymnastics crew. Again, yeah. GCN Challenge, maybe for Matt. They, they are very, very skilled, aren't they, those four? Wow, yeah, they do really put Peter Sagan into the shade. And I've had lots of people asking how John Chocolate Voice Bevan is getting on in his preparation for the upcoming Oat Route, which is really looming quite large now. Uh, so let's move over and head over to him to see exactly how he's getting on. Mid-training ride. Hi guys. Well, you uh, join me in a tranquil field in the English countryside. The birds are singing, the sun is shining, and it's a rest day for me on my Oat Route training. Um, I thought I'd give you a quick update on my progress. Um, in a recent FTP test I did, my functional threshold power is up to 247 watts. So I'm really pleased with that considering back in February it was about 207. So a 40 watt improvement is probably going to serve me very well on the climbs of the Hope route. And uh, speaking of the Hope route, uh, I'm fully aware that there's going to be a heck of a lot of climbing and some very long distances for me to take on. So what I've been focusing on is getting the miles in, getting some longer distances on the bike and uh, trying to get in some hills. I mean, it's safe to say that the hills in England are never going to be as long as an Alpine Pass. But uh, with that in mind, I've been doing a bit more threshold work, a few more intervals on the turbo, just to kind of simulate those Alpine climbs, I suppose. But despite all the toil, the sweat, and sometimes the tears, I'm fitter than I've ever been in my entire life. I'm really looking forward to getting stuck in to the Hope Route itself in a couple of months' time. Stay tuned to the GCN show for more updates on my progress. And in the meantime, if you want an even closer look into the kind of training I'm doing and a few insights into uh, behind the scenes here at GCN, give me a follow on Instagram. It's John underscore Bevan. Give me a follow, give me a like, and uh, I'll see you soon. 
We would like to finish Cycling Shorts though this week by sending our sincere condolences to the friends and family of Sean Wiley who unfortunately passed away last week. Now he might not have been known to many of you out there but Sean as a press officer for Action Bermans and formerly of Team BMC was the first port of call really for much of cycling media and that very much includes us here at GCN. When we launched at GCN he was incredibly helpful in giving us access to Team BMC and he is going to be sorely missed in the cycling community. Community. Racing news now and the Hammer Series Limburg was won by Team Sky who out sprinted Team Sunweb in the final stage the Hammer Chase Team Time Trial and yes you did hear that right it was a sprint or a team sprint in a team time trial to decide the overall. It was fascinating stuff. In third place overall were Orica Scott. Yeah, Tom de Milan, the Giro d'Italia winner, joined his Team Sunweb teammates on day one, the climb, and they finished runners up to Mobistar. Then the following day in the sprint, that was won by Trek Segafredo. However, on count back and aggregate points and placings over the first two days, that wasn't enough for them to finish overall in the top eight, and therefore they couldn't contest for victory on the last day. The Criterium de Dauphiné is now the traditional form builder ahead of the Tour de France and as such it has got a slew of stars in attendance. Chris Froome, Alejandro Valverde, Richie Porte, Dan Martin are all on the start alongside Roman Bardet and a host of other stars. Yeah, Roman Bardet featuring on the cover though, uh, despite not winning last year of the programme for that race. Uh, day one, unusually these days, finished with a winner from the early breakaway. Uh, that person being Thomas de Ghent of Lotto Soudal. He went clear very early on in a group of seven and such was his strength in the closing stages of the race that the bunch never saw him again. Uh, along with the stage victory, he of course picked up the first leader's jersey, also the points jersey, and he'd done enough on the stage to pick up the King of the Mountains jersey as well. So not a bad old day in the saddle for Thomas de Ghent. Stage two, meanwhile, ended up in a big bunch sprint and that was taken by the Frenchman Arnaud Demar of FDJ. Greg Van Avermaet is a rider who we haven't heard or seen much from since his very successful Spring Classics campaign, but he was back in action at the Tour of Luxembourg and he'd lost none of his Classics form. He took two stage wins and the overall victory there. Yeah, plus I don't think he finished outside the top five on any of the stages, quite remarkable really. Another man who is in incredible form still is young Mathieu van der Poel, a 22-year-old Dutch cyclocross specialist. Uh, he continues to mix disciplines. Last weekend, he was back on the road at the four-day Boucle de la Mayenne in France. Although it has to be said, he didn't get off to the best of starts last week. Uh, on day one, he was only third. Really? Yeah, and then on day two, didn't get much better for him. Second place, runner-up on the day. Uh, thankfully, he made up for that on the final two days of racing, winning both of them and the overall general classification. Uh, we jest, of course, what a remarkable talent Mathieu van der Poel is. Uh, stage winner at the Tour of Belgium, second in the UCI Mountain Bike World Cup a few days later, and then never finishing outside the top three at this road race as well. It really is quite a mouth-watering prospect to think of him at the Cobble Classics in the next year or two. Certainly, I, for me, I think that there's almost no race that he couldn't win if he put no, it into it. No, you'd struggle to think of one, wouldn't you? Yeah, you would. Um, there was unfortunately no women's racing this last week, but we're very much looking forward to the Ovo Energy Women's Tour, which takes place in Britain over the next few days. Yeah, all, pretty much all of the women's uh, best women's riders in the world are taking part in that, aren't they? It is time now for Hack Forward Slash, what I'm asking, Bodge. Uh, of the week and we shall kick off with this one which comes in from Luke Jackson. Uh, he's made his own SRAM ETAP blips and sprint shifters. Uh, he's deemed it a real hack himself, which we don't normally like, do we? We'll, we will decide on that. Uh, he's chosen ETAP as well, so that he can easily convert his road bike into a TT bike in just 20 minutes with the careful use of a torque wrench. I have to say, it does look very neat, and I think he's probably right. It does make things far easier when you're changing over handlebars like that. Uh, so I will agree with him in this instance and deem that uh, a hack. Yeah, that's a definite hack. That's a definite hack. Next up, it's Max Thompson. He said, this is my beautiful Doors Super Galaxy with a roof made of bamboo I constructed for our <laughs> annual lad cycling tour. Last year was in the UK in September, so I thought I might need some extra rain shelter. Plus, I stored badminton rackets and breakfast essentials on it. Wow. Hack yeah. or bodge, Dan? Hovis bread, badminton rackets. He's got milk, Keto, full fat milk. Full All fat. sorts going on there. That's, it looks like, sort of like a bodge, doesn't it? But I've got to say, hack. That's amazing. <laughs> Everything that you need for a, a tour on a bike. And more. 
All by the kitchen sink there. Uh, right, this one came on Twitter. It's from Tim Renaudin. Uh, spotted in the office bike cage this morning. That is a three-piece poly pipe mudguard. There's well, not any water going to be going up your backside with that thing, is there? No, I think it's perfectly angled to spray anything that's behind you as well. <laughs> from mudguard, supreme mudguard, I think the previous one was definitely a hack, Dan, what do you reckon? Uh, to, well, you disagree. Everything a hack bodge, a bodge. Um, to this one from Sir Timmy of Mohawk on Twitter. Hashtag GCN hack, homemade rack and part of a fence. Yeah, that looks like a fence panel. You can tell, it's part, you can tell it's part of a fence. Yeah, well, it, they've done quite a neat job, but I'm still going to say bodge. They could have used a better plank of wood to start with, couldn't they? They could. Uh, right, finally, we had this sent in on Twitter, and as you might expect, at Cy underscore Richardson was copied in, because this comes in from Brian D, and it's a link to a YouTube video from Park Tools talking about their chain keeper. Check it out. Hi, this is Ben Oliver with Park Tool, and today we're going to talk about the Dummy Hub. It's a simple little device that may seem kind of strange, but I'm actually a big proponent of using these when you clean your bike. So there you go, professional cycling mechanic is a big proponent of chain keepers, which is what I call them incidentally, not dummy hubs as he said there. Nevertheless, feel free to keep trolling Cy on Twitter uh, if you've got your own chain keepers at home. And if you'd like to send in any more hacks or bodges for next week's show, you can just use the hashtag GCNHack on Twitter or Instagram. I think the hack, or not the hack slash bodge, but the chain keeper conversation is finished now, Dan. No, you don't need to feature No, you can one. keep it going. In Tech of the Week, we're going to take a look at a couple of new bikes which you are likely to see at the Head of Affairs at the upcoming Tour de France and possibly taking a stage win or two along the way. Yeah, first up is Alberto Contador at the Critium de Dauphiné, who looks as though he's riding on the latest iteration of a Trek and Monda. The differences don't look huge compared to the existing model, they're mainly in the dropouts and in the chainstays, but Constor is a rider who pays a huge amount of attention to detail to his kit, so we can expect him to be using this bike, the lightest bike possible at the Tour de France, where we look forward to finding out a bit more. Mm. Conversely, we know a lot more about the new iteration of BMC's very popular team machine frames there because they have officially uh, released it to the public. Apparently they used a supercomputer has come up with 34,000 different iterations uh, of this frame set before they came up with this, the final model. As you might expect in 2017, there are both rim brake and disc brake options available. And apparently there's also the option of a direct mount rear mech, which lastly tells me comes over from the mountain bike world. Yes, yeah, Shimano's thing in mountain biking. Right. right. One final new bike also spotted at the Criterium de Dauphiné is Dan Martin aboard this. Looks very much like a new specialised tarmac, but as with the Trekamonda, details are very limited and we look forward to finding out more in the next few weeks. That one does look significantly different, doesn't it, to its predecessor? It is time now for this week's GCN What is Bazooka? This week's Pro What is Bazooka goes to Theo Gagan Hart for his performance at the Hammer Series at the weekend, but specifically for his performance on the final few hundred metres of the chase on the last day. It was basically down to him as the non-sprinter left at the four-man Team Sky squad coming in towards the finish to make sure that they won. He ended up out sprinting on his TT bike three of the guys from Team Sunweb therefore giving Team Sky uh, the first ever win at the series. This tweet shows just how much it meant to Teo, but on top of the victory, uh, he's now got a wattage bazooka to his name as well, so well done to you. Yes, thoroughly, thoroughly deserved there. The viewer wattage bazooka was nominated by Arvitz Calvites. It goes to Arville's Bickstroms for this incredible sprint performance where he puts out numbers that, to be honest, if I saw them when I was cycling, I'd probably need to calibrate my power meter. Yeah, that's right. An incredible sprint there. Uh, I particularly like the person that he passes with 30 metres to go who looks round thinking he's won, immediately knowing that he's lost. Those were some incredible numbers, weren't they? So again, a thoroughly well-deserved wattage bazooka. Uh, if you'd like to nominate anybody else, or indeed yourself, for next week's prize, uh, just use the hashtag wattagebazooka, as you see here. Dom has chosen three tweets for us this time around. The first one comes from Matt Heyman of Orica Scott. Uh, first day of the Hammer series done. New, fast and hard racing. More the nail than the hammer. I presume he found the first day quite hard. It did look rather hard. Next one is from Darwin Atapuma, who tweeted this photo saying, Estas días también estamos afinando el rugido. Uh, today, something something raw. 
is about all I can get from that in Spanish. But that is a cracking that's shot, a good, isn't it? It's a good buff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and finally, there's this one from Tom at Dumoulin, uh, who tweeted last week, back to normal life out in the garden playing with his dog. Do you think he picks up his dog's... Um... I'll leave that. <laughs> Comment of the week now, and underneath quite an old video, it was our worst ever cycling tips with Matt Stevens, was this one from Tri Shaker Tops who said, worst advice I've seen, Matt's Crocs. Yeah, very good point, actually. Uh, underneath last week's GCN show, meanwhile, Niels Heldens wrote, uh, Dan's hair is coming back. Thank you very much. Uh, Tom DeMilan won the Giro. GCN has got new shirts. Life is good. To which we replied, how could it get even better? And we weren't expecting quite such a long reply as we got, as you can see on the screen right now. Uh, amongst other things, a set of Zip 303 wheels and a time trial bike. And Many finally, more there as well. Finally conquering Norway, which has left me a bit confused. <laughs> and then underneath the How to Improve Your Cycling Balance, 4v3 commented, I feel like Matt shouldn't be the one teaching us about balance. And 76 of you gave that one a thumbs yeah, up. Yeah, true that. It's quite unfair. He shouldn't teach you about clipping in, but balance, I think. Ish. He's come off a few times, hasn't he? True. <laughs> Next time you get whoa, <laughs> me, Jesus, here, uh, pretty classic. <laughs> Bow, <fuck. laughs> Coming up on the channel this week, on Wednesday, we give you our guide to riding multi-stage events. And along similar lines, uh, on Thursday, we give you our top 10 facts for the race across America. Then Friday, as ever, is Ask GC Anything. On Saturday, we take a look at Patrick Conrad of Bora Hands Growers Specialized Tarmac Pro Bike. On Sunday, we explain how to dress for cycling in the high mountains. And on Monday, it's six pre-ride checks you should probably know about. Yeah, and then on Tuesday, we're back in the set for the GCN Show. Episode 231. That's correct, Lasty. Good maths. From the top of Haleakala, Maui, Hawaii, welcome to the GCN Show. Due to popular demand, this week's Extreme Corner comes from a road rider. This is the Frenchman Michael Charel of AG2R pulling off some mighty tricks. Really pushes things to the limit. Mm. Uh, well, that is another bit of proof as to why we shouldn't use road riders too much when it comes to Extreme Corner. Uh, for those of you who complain that we always use mountain bikers and trials riders, that is the reason. Yeah, exactly. Now, before you go, there are a few things in our shop that I think I should point you to. As modelled by yours truly and Dan, we've got our new Velo print range of clothing, so you can get t-shirts, hoodies and sweatshirts. They are made from organic cotton and printed using water-based inks. And we've also expanded our range of the very popular Camelback GCN bottles. Head over there and take a look. There's a link to the shop on screen now, and there's also a, our logo on screen. And if you click on that, you can subscribe to the channel. Mm. Uh, well, yeah, make sure you do subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. After which, you can head to one of the following two videos, which are just down here. This one is how to improve your balance on the bike, uh, with Matt Stevens, but perhaps more importantly with Cy Richardson as well. And just down here is how to set a new PB on a climb. With Daniel Lloyd, but more importantly, he's signed that one as well. Yeah. <laughs>